translation of Zahi Bukhari, Book 4. Ablutions. Wudu. Volume 1, Book 4, Number 137. Narrated Abu Huraira. Allah's Apostle said, The prayer of a person who does, Hadath, that is passes, urine, stool or wind, is not accepted till he performs repeats the ablution. A person from Hadaramaut asked Abu Huraira, What is Hadath? Abu Huraira replied, Hadath means the passing of wind from the Innes. Number 138. Narrated Um al Mujamir. Once I went up the roof of the mosque, along with Abu Huraira. He performed ablution and said, I heard the Prophet saying, On the day of resurrection, my followers will be called Al Gur'ul Muhajjalan from the trace of ablution, and whoever can increase the area of his radiance should do so. That is by performing ablution regularly. Number 139. Narrated Abbas Ben Tamim. My uncle asked Allah's Apostle about a person who imagined to have passed wind during the prayer. Allah Apostle replied, He should not leave his prayers unless he hears sound or smells something. Number 140. Narrated Quraib. Ibn Abbas said, The Prophet slept till he snored and then prayed or probably lay till his breath sounds were heard and then got up and prayed. Ibn Abbas added, I stayed overnight in the house of my aunt, Maimuna. The Prophet slept for a part of the night. See Fatih al Bari, page 249, volume 1. And late in the night, he got up and performed ablution from a hanging water skin, a light perfect ablution, and stood up for the prayer. I, too, performed a similar ablution, then I went and stood on his left. He drew me to his right and prayed as much as Allah wished and again lay and slept till his breath sounds were heard. Later on the Mu'addin, that is call maker for the prayer came to him and informed him that it was time for prayer. The Prophet went with him for the prayer without performing a new ablution. Sufyan said to Amr that some people said, The eyes of Allah's apostle sleep but his heart does not sleep. Amr replied, I heard Ubaid bin Umar saying that the dreams of prophets were divine inspiration, and then he recited the verse, I. Abraham see in a dream, O my son that I offer you in sacrifice to Allah, Quran 37 verse 102, see hadith number 183. Number 141. Narrated Usama bin Zayyid. Allah's apostle proceeded from Arafat till when he reached the mountain pass, he dismounted, urinated and then performed ablution but not a perfect one. I said to him, Is it the time for the prayer, O Allah's apostle? He said, The place of prayer is ahead of you. He rode till when he reached Al Muzdalifa, he dismounted and performed ablution and the perfect one, the call for a comma was pronounced and he led the Maghrib prayer. Then everybody made his camel kneel down at its place. Then the comma was pronounced for the Isha prayer which the Prophet led and no prayer was offered in between the two, prayers Isha and Maghrib. Number 142. Narrated Ben Yasser. Ibn Abbas performed ablution and washed his face in the following way. He ladled out a handful of water, rinsed his mouth and washed his nose with it by putting in water and then blowing it out. He then, took another handful of water and did like this gesturing joining both hands, and washed his face, took another handful of water and washed his right forearm. He again took another handful of water and washed his left forearm and passed wet hands over his head and took another handful of water and poured it over his right foot up to his ankles and washed it thoroughly and similarly took another handful of water and washed thoroughly his left foot up to the ankles and said, I saw Allah's Apostle performing ablution in this way. Number 143. Narrated Ibn Abbas. The Prophet said, If anyone of you on having sexual relations with his wife said and he must say it before starting, in the name of Allah. O Allah, protect us from Satan and also protect what you bestow upon us that is the coming offspring from Satan, and if it is destined that they should have a child then, Satan will never be able to harm that offspring. Number 144. Narrated Anas. Whenever the Prophet went to answer the call of nature, he used to say, Allahumma inni a'udu bi kaman al-kub thi wal that is O Allah. I seek refuge with you from all offensive and wicked things, evil deeds and evil spirits. Number 145. Narrated Ibn Abbas. 
once the Prophet entered a lavatory and I placed water for his ablution. He asked, Who placed it? He was informed accordingly and so he said, O oh Allah! Make him Ibn Abbas a learned scholar in religion Islam. Number 146 Narrated Abu Ayyub al-Ansari Allah's Apostle said, If anyone of you goes to an open space for answering the call of nature he should neither face nor turn his back towards the Qibla. He should either face the east or the west. Number 147 Narrated Abdullah bin Umar People say, Whenever you sit for answering the call of nature, you should not face the Qibla or Bani Tulmaktis, that is Jerusalem, I told them. Once I went up the roof of our house and I saw Allah's Apostle answering the call of nature while sitting on two bricks facing Bani Tulmaktis that is Jerusalem but there was a screen covering him. Fatah al-Bari, page 258, volume 1. Number 148. Narrated Aisha. The wives of the Prophet used to go to Al-Manasi, a vast open place near Baqiyah at Medina to answer the call of nature at night. Umar used to say to the Prophet let your wives be veiled, but Allah's Apostle did not do so. One night Sa'udah bin Zama the wife of the Prophet went out at Isha time and she was a tall lady. Umar addressed her and said, I have recognized you, O Sa'udah. He said so as he desired eagerly that the verses of Al-Hijab the observing of veils by the Muslim women may be revealed. So Allah revealed the verses of Al-Hijab a complete body cover excluding the eyes. Number 149 Narrated Aisha The Prophet said to his wives, You are allowed to go out to answer the call of nature. Number 150 Narrated Abdullah bin Umar I went up to the roof of Hafsa's house for some job and I saw Allah's Apostle answering the call of nature facing Sham, that is Syria, Jordan, Palestine and Lebanon regarded as one country with his back towards the Qibla. See Hadith number 147. Number 151. Narrated Abdullah bin Umar. Once I went up the roof of our house and saw Allah's Apostle answering the call of nature while sitting over two bricks facing by Tomakdis. That is Jerusalem, see Hadith number 147. Number 152. Narrated Anas bin Malik. Whenever Allah's Apostle went to answer the call of nature, I along with another boy used to accompany him with a tumbler full of water. Hisham commented, so that he might wash his private parts with it. Number 153. Narrated Anas. Whenever Allah's Apostle went to answer the call of nature, I along with another boy from us used to go behind him with a tumbler full of water. Number 154. Narrated Anas bin Malik. Whenever Allah's Apostle went to answer the call of nature, I along with another boy used to carry a tumbler full of water for cleaning the private parts and an anza, spearheaded stuck. Number 155. Narrated Abu Qatada. Allah's Apostle said, Whenever anyone of you drinks water, he should not breathe in the drinking utensil, and whenever anyone of you goes to a lavatory, he should neither touch his penis nor clean his private parts with his right hand. Number 156. Narrated Abu Qatada. The Prophet said, Whenever anyone of you makes water he should not hold his penis or clean his private parts with his right hand. And while drinking one should not breathe in the drinking utensil. Number 157. Narrated Abu Huraira. I followed the Prophet while he was going out to answer the call of nature. He used not to look this way or that. So, when I approached near him he said to me, Fetch for me some stones for cleaning the private's parts or said something similar, and do not bring a bone or a piece of dung. So I brought the stones in the corner of my garment and placed them by his side and I then went away from him. When he finished from answering the call of nature he used them. Number 158. Narrated Abdullah. The Prophet went out to answer the call of nature and asked me to bring three stones. I found two stones and searched for the third but could not find it. So took a dried piece of dung and brought it to him. He took the two stones and threw away the dung and said, This is a filthy thing. Number 159. Narrated Ibn Abbas. The Prophet performed ablution by washing the body parts only once. Number 160. 
narrated Abdullah bin Zayyid. The Prophet performed ablution by washing the body parts twice. Number 161. Narrated Humran. The slave of Uthman, I saw Uthman bin Affan asking for a tumbler of water and when it was brought he poured water over his hands and washed them thrice and then put his right hand in the water container and rinsed his mouth, washed his nose by putting water in it and then blowing it out. Then he washed his face and forearms up to the elbows thrice, passed his wet hands over his head and washed his feet up to the ankles thrice. Then he said, Allah's Apostle said if anyone performs ablution like that of mine and offers a two-racket prayer during which he does not think of anything else not related to the present prayer then his past sins will be forgiven. After performing the ablution Uthman said, I am going to tell you a hadith which I would not have told you, had I not been compelled by a certain holy verse the sub-narrator Urwa said. This verse is, Verily, those who conceal the clear signs and the guidance which we have sent down Quran 2 verse 159, I heard the Prophet saying, If a man performs ablution perfectly and then offers the compulsory congregational prayer, Allah will forgive his sins committed between that prayer and the next prayer till he offers it. Number 162 Narrated Abu Hurairah The Prophet said, Whoever performs ablution should clean his nose with water by putting the water in it and then blowing it out, and whoever cleans his private parts with stones should do it with odd number of stones. Number 163 Narrated Abu Hurairah Allah's Apostle said, If anyone of you performs ablution he should put water in his nose and then blow it out and whoever cleans his private parts with stones should do so with odd numbers. And whoever wakes up from a sleep should wash his hands before putting them in the water for ablution, because nobody knows where his hands were during sleep. Number 164 Narrated Abdullah bin Amr The Prophet remained behind us on a journey. He joined us while we were performing ablution for the Asr prayer which was overdue and we were just passing wet hands over our feet, not washing them thoroughly so he addressed us in a loud voice saying twice or thrice. Save your heels from the fire. Number 165. Narrated Humran. The freed slave of Uthman bin Affan. I saw Uthman bin Affan asking for a tumbler of water to perform ablution and when it was brought he poured water from it over his hands and washed them thrice and then put his right hand in the water container and rinsed his mouth and washed his nose by putting water in it and then blowing it out. Then he washed his face thrice and then forearms up to the elbows thrice then passed his wet hands over his head and then washed each foot thrice. After that Uthman said, I saw the Prophet performing ablution like this of mine, and he said, If anyone performs ablution like that of mine and offers a two-racket prayer during which he does not think of anything else not related to the present prayer then his past sins will be forgiven. Number 166 Narrated Muhammad ibn Ziyad I heard Abu Huraira saying as he passed by us while the people were performing ablution from a utensil containing water, perform ablution perfectly and thoroughly for Abul Qasim, the Prophet said, save your heels from the hellfire. Number 167 Narrated Ubaid ibn Jiraj I asked Abdullah bin Umar, O Abu Abdur Rahman. I saw you doing four things which I never saw being done by any one of you companions. Abdullah bin Umar said, what are those, O Ibn Jiraj? I said, I never saw you touching any corner of the Kaaba except these two facing South Yemen and I saw you wearing shoes made of tanned leather and dyeing your hair within a, a kind of dye. I also noticed that whenever you were in Mecca, the people assume Iharaman seeing the new moon crescent first of Dhuhajjah while you did not assume the Ilau, Iharam. Ihram is also called Ilal which means loud calling because a mudam has to recite Tabi aloud when assuming the state of Ihram, till the 8th of Dhuhajjah that is day of Tarwiyah, Abdullah replied, regarding the corners of Kaaba. I never saw Allah's apostle touching except those facing South Yemen and regarding the tanned leather shoes, no doubt I saw Allah's apostle wearing non-hairy shoes and he used to perform ablution while wearing the shoes, that is wash his feet and then put on the shoes so I love to wear similar shoes. And about the dyeing of hair within a No doubt I saw Allah's apostle dyeing his hair with it and that is why I like to dye my hair with it. Regarding Elal, I did not see Allah's apostle assuming Elal till he set out for Hajj on the 8th of Dhuhajjah.
Number 168. Narrated Umatiya. That the Prophet at the time of washing his deceased daughter had said to them, Start from the right side beginning with those parts which are washed in ablution. Number 169. Narrated Aisha. The Prophet used to like to start from the right side on wearing shoes, combing his hair and cleaning or washing himself and on doing anything else. Number 170. Narrated Anas bin Malik. Saw Allah's Apostle when the Asr prayer was due and the people searched for water to perform ablution but they could not find it. Later on a pot full of water for ablution was brought to Allah's Apostle. He put his hand in that pot and ordered the people to perform ablution from it. I saw the water springing out from underneath his fingers till all of them performed the ablution. It was one of the miracles of the Prophet. Number 17. Narrated Ibn Sirin. I said to Abida, I have some of the hair of the Prophet which I got from Anas or from his family. Abida replied, No doubt if I had a single hair of that it would have been dearer to me than the whole world and whatever is in it. Number 172. Narrated Anas. When Allah's Apostle got his head shaved, Abu Talha was the first to take some of his hair. Number 173. Narrated Abu Huraira. Allah's Apostle said, If a dog drinks from the utensil of any one of you it is essential to wash it seven times. Number 174. Narrated Abu Huraira. The Prophet said, A man saw a dog eating mud from the severity of thirst. So, that man took a shoe and filled it with water and kept on pouring the water for the dog till it quenched its thirst. So Allah approved of his deed and made him to enter paradise. And narrated Hamza bin Abdullah. My father said, During the lifetime of Allah's apostle, the dogs used to urinate, and pass through the mosques come and go, nevertheless they never used to sprinkle water on a urine of the dog. Number 175. Narrated Adi bin Hadam. I asked the Prophet about the hunting dogs and he replied, If you let loose with Allah's name your tame dog after a game and it hunts it, you may eat it, but if the dog eats of that game then do not eat it because the dog has hunted it for itself. I further said, Sometimes I send my dog for hunting and find another dog with it. He said, Do not eat the game for you have mentioned Allah's name only on sending your dog and not the other dog. Number 176. Narrated Abu Huraira. Allah's Apostle said, A person is considered in prayer as long as he is waiting for the prayer in the mosque as long as he does not do hadath. A non-Arab man asked, O Abu Huraira, What is hadath? I replied, It is the passing of wind from the anus that is one of the types of hadath. Number 177. Narrated Abbas ben Tamim. My uncle said. The Prophet said, one should not leave his prayer unless he hears sound or smells something. Number 178. Narrated Ali. I used to get emotional urethral discharges frequently and felt shy to ask Allah's Apostle about it. So I requested al Muqtad bin al Aswad to ask the Prophet about it. al Muqtad asked him and he replied, On has to perform ablution after it. Number 179. Narrated Zayyid bin Khalid. I asked Uthman bin Affan about a person who engaged in intercourse but did no discharge. Uthman replied, he should perform ablution like the one for an ordinary prayer but he must wash his penis. Uthman added, I heard it from Allah's Apostle. I asked Ali as Zubair, Talha and Ubay bin Kaab about it and they, too, gave the same reply. This order was cancelled later on and taking a bath became necessary for such cases. Number 180 Narrated Abu Said al Qud. Allah's Apostle sent for a Ansari man who came with water dropping from his head. The Prophet said, Perhaps we have forced you to hurry up, haven't we? The Ansari replied, Yes. Allah's Apostle further said, If you are forced to hurry up during intercourse or you do not discharge, then ablution is due on you. This order was cancelled later on, that is, one has to take a bath. Number 181. Narrated Usama bin Zayyid. When Allah's Apostle departed from Arafat, he turned towards a mountain pass where he answered the call of nature. After he had finished I poured water and he performed ablution and then I said to him, O Allah's Apostle, 
will you offer the prayer? He replied, the Musala, that is place of the prayers ahead of you in al Muzdalifa. Number 182. Narrated al mugira bin Shuba. I was in the company of Allah's apostle on one of the journeys and he went out to answer the call of nature, and after he finished I poured water and he performed ablution. He washed his face, forearms and passed his wet hand over his head and over the two kuf, that is leather socks. Number 183. Narrated Abdullah bin Abbas. That he stayed overnight in the house of Maimuna the wife of the Prophet, his aunt. He added. I lay on the bed cushion transversely while Allah's apostle and his wife lay in the lengthwise direction of the cushion. Allah's apostle slept till the middle of the night, either a bit before or a bit after it and then woke up, rubbing the traces of sleep off his face with his hands. He then, recited the last ten verses of Surah Al-Imran, got up and went to a hanging water skin. He then performed the ablution from it and it was a perfect ablution, and then stood up to offer the prayer. I, too, got up and did as the Prophet had done. Then I went and stood by his side. He placed his right hand on my head and caught my right ear and twisted it. He prayed to record then to record and to record and then to record and then to record and then to record separately six times, and finally one raka, the witcher. Then he lay down again in the bed till the Mu'abdin came to him whereupon the Prophet got up, offered a two light racket prayer and went out and led the Fajr prayer. Number 184. Narrated Esma bin Abu Bakr. I came to Aisha the wife of the Prophet during the solar eclipse. The people were standing and offering the prayer and she was also praying. I asked her, what is wrong with the people? She beckoned with her hand towards the sky and said, Subhanallah. I asked her, is there a sign? She pointed out, yes. So I, too, stood for the prayer till I fell unconscious and later on I poured water on my head. After the prayer, Allah's apostle praised and glorified Allah and said, Just now I have seen something which I never saw before at this place of mine, including paradise and hell. I have been inspired and have understood that you will be put to trials in your graves and these trials will be like the trials of ad Dajjal, or nearly like it the sub-narrator is not sure of what Esma said, angels will come to every one of you and ask, what do you know about this man? A believer will reply, he is Muhammad, Allah's apostle, and he came to us with self-evident truth and guidance. So we accepted his teaching, believed and followed him. Then the angels will say to him to sleep in peace as they have come to know that he was a believer. On the other hand a hypocrite or a doubtful person will reply, I do not know but heard the people saying something and so I said the same. Number 185. Narrated Young Al-Mazini. A person asked Abdullah bin Zayyid who was the grandfather of Amr bin Yahya, can you show me how Allah's apostle used to perform ablution? Abdullah bin Zayyid replied in the affirmative and asked for water. He poured it on his hands and washed them twice, then he rinsed his mouth thrice and washed his nose with water thrice by putting water in it and blowing it out. He washed his face thrice and after that he washed his forearms up to the elbows twice and then passed his wet hands over his head from its front to its back and vice versa beginning from the front and taking them to the back of his head up to the nap of the neck and then brought them to the front again from where he had started and washed his feet up to the ankles. Number 186. Narrated Amr. My father saw Amr bin Abi Hassan asking Abdullah bin Zayyid about the ablution of the Prophet. Abdullah bin Zayyid asked for earthenware pot containing water and in front of them performed ablution like that of the Prophet. He poured water from the pot over his hand and washed his hands thrice and then he put his hands in the pot and rinsed his mouth and washed his nose by putting water in it and then blowing it out with three handfuls of water. Again he put his hand in the water and washed his face thrice and washed his forearms up to the elbows twice and then put his hands in the water and then passed them over his head by bringing them to the front and then to the rear of the head once, and then he washed his feet up to the ankles. Number 187. Narrated Abu Jaharifa. Allah's apostle came to us at noon and water for ablution was brought to him. After he had performed ablution, the remaining water was taken by the people and they started smearing their bodies with it as a blessed thing, 
the Prophet offered two rakat of the Zer prayer and then two rakat of the Asr prayer while an Anza that a spearheaded stick was there as a sutra in front of him. Abu Musa said, the Prophet asked for a tumbler containing water and washed both his hands and face in it and then threw a mouthful of water in the tumbler and said to both of us, Abu Musa and Bilal, drink from the tumbler and pour some of its water on your faces and chests. Number 188. Narrated Ibn Shihab. Ma'am ibn Ar-Rabi who was the person on whose face the Prophet had ejected a mouthful of water from his family's well while he was a boy, and Urwa on the authority of al Nizwar and others who testified each other, said, whenever the Prophet performed ablution, his companions were nearly fighting for the remains of the water. Number 189. Narrated Esaib bin Yazid. My aunt took me to the Prophet and said, O Allah's Apostle! This son of my sister has got a disease in his legs. So he passed his hands on my head and prayed for Allah's blessings for me. Then he performed ablution and I drank from the remaining water. I stood behind him and saw the seal of prophethood between the shoulders, and it was like the Zir al hijla means the button of a small tent, but some said egg of a partridge. Etc. Number 190. Narrated Amr ben Yahya. On the authority of his father, Abdullah bin Zadi had poured water on his hands from a utensil containing water and washed them and then with one handful of water he rinsed his mouth and cleaned his nose by putting water in it and then blowing it out. He repeated it thrice. He, then, washed his hands and forearms up to the elbows twice and passed wet hands over his head, both forwards and backwards, and washed his feet up to the ankles and said, This is the ablution of Allah's Apostle. Number 191 Narrated Amr bin Yahya. My father said, I saw Amr bin Abi Hassan asking Abdullah bin Zayyid about the ablution of the Prophet. Abdullah bin Zayyid asked for an earthenware pot containing water and performed ablution in front of them. He poured water over his hands and washed them thrice. Then he put his right hand in the pot and rinsed his mouth and washed his nose by putting water in it and then blowing it out thrice with three handfuls of water again he put his hand in the water and washed his face thrice. After that he put his hand in the pot and washed his forearms up to the elbows twice and then again put his hand in the water and passed wet hands over his head by bringing them to the front and then to the back and once more he put his hand in the pot and washed his feet up to the ankles. Number 193 Narrated Jabir. Allah's Apostle came to visit me while I was sick and unconscious. He performed ablution and sprinkled the remaining water on me and I became conscious and said, O Allah's Apostle! To whom will my inheritance go as I have neither ascendants nor descendants? Then the divine verses regarding Farah'id, that is inheritance were revealed. Number 194. Narrated Anas. It was the time for prayer. And those whose houses were near got up and went to their people to perform ablution, and there remained some people sitting, then a painted stove pot, Macdob containing water was brought to Allah's apostles the pot was small, not broad enough for one to spread one's hand in, yet all the people performed ablution. The sub-narrator said, We asked Anas, how many persons were you? Anas replied we were eighty or more, it was one of the miracles of Allah's apostle. Number 195. Narrated Abu Musa. Once the Prophet asked for a tumbler containing water. He washed his hands and face in it and also threw a mouthful of water in it. Number 196. Narrated Abdullah bin Zayyid. Once Allah's Apostle came to us and we brought out water for him in a brass pot. He performed ablution thus he washed his face thrice, and his forearms to the elbows twice then passed his wet hands lightly over the head from front to rear and brought them to front again and washed his feet up to the ankles. Number 197. Narrated Aisha. When the ailment of the Prophet became aggravated and his disease became severe, he asked his wives to permit him to be nurse treated in my house. So they gave him the permission. Then the Prophet came to my house with the support of two men, and his legs were dragging on the ground, between the bus and another man. Obaidullah the sub-narrator said, I informed Abdullah ben Abbas of what Aisha said. Ibn Abbas said, Do you know who was the other man? I replied in the negative. Ibn Abbas said, He was Ali bin Abi Talib, 
Aisha further said, when the Prophet came to my house and his sickness became aggravated he ordered us to pour seven skins full of water on him, so that he might give some advice to the people. So he was seated in a Malik Dab that is brass tub belonging to Hafsa, the wife of the Prophet. Then, all of us started pouring water on him from the water skins till he beckoned to us to stop and that we have done what he wanted us to do, after that he went out to the people. Number 198 Narrated Amr ben Yahya. On the authority of his father, my uncle used to perform ablution extravagantly and once he asked Abdullah bin Zahya to tell him how he had seen the Prophet performing ablution. He asked for an earthenware pot containing water, and poured water from it on his hands and washed them thrice, and then put his hand in the earthenware pot and rinsed his mouth and washed his nose by putting water in it and then blowing it out thrice with one handful of water. He again put his hand in the water and took a handful of water and washed his face thrice, then washed his hands up to the elbows twice, and took water with his hand, and passed it over his head from front to back and then from back to front, and then washed his feet up to the ankles and said, I saw the Prophet performing ablution in that way. Number 199 Narrated Thabit Anas said, The Prophet asked for water and a tumbler with a broad basin no so deep, containing a small quantity of water, was brought to him whereby he put his fingers in it. Anas further said, Notice the water springing out from amongst his fingers. Anas added, Estimated that the people who performed ablution with it numbered between 70 to 80. Number 200. Narrated Anas. The Prophet used to take a bath with one saw or up to five muds, one saw equal muds of water and used to perform ablution with one mud of water. Number 201. Narrated Abdullah bin Umar. Saad bin Abi Waqqas said, The Prophet passed wet hands over his kufs. Abdullah bin Umar asked Umar about it. Umar replied in the affirmative and added, Whenever Saad narrates a hadith from the Prophet, there is no need to ask anyone else about it. Number 202. Narrated Al Mu'l Rabin Shuba. Once Allah's Apostle went out to answer the call of nature and I followed him with a tumbler containing water, and when he finished, I poured water and he performed ablution and passed wet hands over his kufs. Number 203. Narrated Jafar bin Amr bin Amayya ad Damri. My father said, I saw the Prophet passing wet hands over his kufs. Number 204. Narrated Jafar bin Amr. My father said, I saw the Prophet passing wet hands over his turban and kufs, leather socks. Number 205. Narrated Urwa bin al Mugira. My father said, Once I was in the company of the Prophet on a journey and I dashed to take off his kufs, he ordered me to leave them as he had put them after performing ablution. So he passed wet hands o'er them. Number 206. Narrated Abdullah bin Abbas. Allah's Apostle ate a piece of cooked mutton from the shoulder region and prayed without repeating ablution. Number 207. Narrated Jafar bin Amr bin Amaya. My father said, I saw Allah's Apostle taking a piece of cooked mutton from the shoulder region and then he was called for prayer. He put his knife down and prayed without repeating ablution. Number 208. Narrated Suwaid bin al naman In the year of the conquest of Kaibar I went with Allah's Apostle till we reached Saba, a place near Kaibar, where Allah's Apostle offered the Asr prayer and asked for food. Nothing but Sawarek was brought. He ordered it to be moistened with water. He and all of us ate it and the Prophet got up for the evening prayer that is Maghrib prayer, rinsed his mouth with water and we did the same, and he then prayed without repeating the ablution. Number 209. Narrated Maimuna. The Prophet ate a piece of mutton from the shoulder region and then prayed without repeating the ablution. Number 210. Narrated Ibn Abbas. Allah's Apostle drank milk, rinsed his mouth and said, It has fat. Number 211. Narrated Aisha. Allah's Apostle said, If anyone of you feels drowsy while praying he should go to bed sleep till his slumber is over because in praying while drowsy one does not know whether one is asking for forgiveness or for a bad thing for oneself. Number 212. Narrated Anas. The Prophet said, if anyone of you feels drowsy while praying, he should sleep till he understands what he is saying reciting. Number 213. 
narrated Amr ben Amir. Anas said, the Prophet used to perform ablution for every prayer. I asked Anas, what you used to do? Anas replied, we used to pray with the same ablution until we break it with hadath. Number 214. Narrated Suwait bin Numan. In the year of the conquest of Kaibar I went with Allah's Apostle till we reached as saba where Allah's Apostle led the Asr prayer and asked for the food. Nothing but sawak was brought and we ate it and drank water, the Prophet got up for the Maghrib prayer, rinsed his mouth with water and then led the prayer without repeating the ablution. Number 215. Narrated Ibn Abbas. Once the Prophet, while passing through one of the graveyards of Medina or Mecca heard the voices of two persons who were being tortured in their graves. The Prophet said, these two persons are being tortured not for a major sin to avoid, the Prophet then added, yes. They are being tortured for a major sin, indeed, one of them never saved himself from being soiled with his urine while the other used to go about with calumnies, to make enemy between friends, the Prophet then asked for a green leaf of a date palm tree broke it into two pieces and put one on each grave on being asked why he had done so, he replied, I hope that their torture might be lessened, till these get dried. Number 216. Narrated Anas bin Malik. Whenever the Prophet went to answer the call of nature, I used to bring water with which he used to clean his private parts. Number 217. Narrated Ibn Abbas. The Prophet once passed by two graves and said, these two persons are being tortured not for a major sin to avoid, one of them never saved himself from being soiled with his urine, while the other used to go about with calumnies, to make enmity between friends, the Prophet then took a green leaf of a date palm tree, split it into pieces and fixed one on each grave. They said, O Allah's Apostle! Why have you done so? He replied, I hope that their punishment might be less until these the pieces of the leaf become dry. See the footnote of Hadith 215. Number 218. Narrated Anas bin Malik. The Prophet saw a Bedouin making water in the mosque and told the people not to disturb him. When he finished, the Prophet asked for some water and poured it over the urine. Number 219. Narrated Abu Huraira. A Bedouin stood up and started making water in the mosque. The people caught him but the Prophet ordered them to leave him and to pour a bucket or a tumbler of water over the place where he had passed the urine. The Prophet then said, You have been sent to make things easy and not to make them difficult. Number 221. Narrated Anas bin Malik. A Bedouin came and passed urine in one corner of the mosque. The people shouted at him but the Prophet stopped them till he finished urinating. The Prophet ordered them to spill a bucket of water over that place and they did so. Number 222. Narrated Aisha. The mother of faithful believers, a child was brought to Allah's Apostle and it urinated on the garment of the Prophet. The Prophet asked for water and poured it over the soiled place. Number 223. Narrated Umkayas bent Misin. I brought my young son who had not started eating ordinary food to Allah's Apostle who took him and made him sit in his lap. The child urinated on the garment of the Prophet, so he asked for water and poured it over the soiled area and did not wash it. Number 224. Narrated Hudayfa. Once the Prophet went to the dumps of some people and passed urine while standing. He then asked for water and so I brought it to him and he performed ablution. Number 225. Narrated Hudayfa, the Prophet and I walked till we reached the dumps of some people. He stood, as any one of you stands, behind the wall and urinated. I went away, but he beckoned me to come. So I approached him and stood near his back till he finished. Number 226. Narrated Abu Wa'il. Abu Musa al-Ashari used to lay great stress on the question of urination and he used to say, if anyone from Bani Israel happened to soil his clothes with urine, he used to cut that portion away. Hearing that, Hudayfa said to Abu Wa'il, I wish he Abu Musa didn't lay great stress on that matter. Hudayfa added, Allah's apostle went to the dumps of some people and urinated while standing. Number 227. Narrated Esma, a woman came to the Prophet and said, If anyone of us gets menses in her clothes then what should she do? He replied, 
she should take hold of the soiled place, rub it and put it in the water and rub it in order to remove the traces of blood and then pour water over it. Then she can pray in it. Number 228. Narrated Aisha. Fathima bint Abi Habash came to the Prophet and said, O Allah's Apostle I get persistent bleeding from the uterus and do not become clean. Shall I give up my prayers? Allah's Apostle replied, No, because it is from a blood vessel and not the menses. So when your real menses begins give up your prayers and when it has finished wash off the blood take a bath and offer your prayers. Hisham, the sub-narrator narrated that his father had also said, the Prophet told her, perform ablution for every prayer till the time of the next period comes. Number 229 Narrated Aisha I used to wash the traces of Janaba, that is semen from the clothes of the Prophet and he used to go for prayers while traces of water were still on it water spots were still visible. Number 231 Narrated Suleiman ben Yasser I asked Aisha about the clothes soiled with semen. She replied, I used to wash it off the clothes of Allah's apostle and he would go for the prayer while water spots were still visible. Number 232 Narrated Amr ben Maimon I heard Suleiman ben Yasser talking about the clothes soiled with semen. He said that Aisha has said, I used to wash it off the clothes of Allah's apostle and he would go for the prayers while water spots were still visible on them. Number 233. Narrated Aisha, I used to wash the semen off the clothes of the Prophet and even then I used to notice one or more spots on them. Number 234. Narrated Abu Kalaba, Anas said, Some people of Ukal or Urana tribe came to Medina and its climate did not suit them. So the Prophet ordered them to go to the herd of milch camels and to drink their milk and urine as a medicine, so they went as directed and after they became healthy, they killed the shepherd of the Prophet and drove away all the camels. The news reached the Prophet early in the morning and he sent men in their pursuit and they were captured and brought at noon. He then ordered to cut their hands and feet and it was done, and their eyes were branded with heated pieces of iron, they were put in Alhar and when they asked for water, no water was given to them. Abu Kalaba said, Those people committed theft and murder became infidels after embracing Islam and fought against Allah and his apostle. Number 235. Narrated Anas. Prior to the construction of the mosque, the Prophet offered the prayers at sheep folds. Number 236. Narrated Maimun Allah's apostle was asked regarding ghee cooking butter in which a mouse had fallen. He said, take out the mouse and throw away the ghee around it and use the rest. Number 238. Narrated Abu Hurairah the Prophet said, A wound which a Muslim receives in Allah's cause will appear on the day of resurrection as it was at the time of infliction. Blood will be flowing from the wound and its color will be that of the blood but will smell like musk. Number 239. Narrated Abu Hurairah. Allah's Apostle said, We Muslims are the last people to come in the world but will be the foremost on the day of resurrection. The same narrator told that the Prophet has said, You should not pass urine in stagnant water which is not flowing then you may need to wash in it. Number 241 Narrated Abdullah bin Mazud Once the Prophet was offering prayers at the Kaaba, Abu Jahal was sitting with some of his companions. One of them said to the others, Who amongst you will bring the abdominal contents intestines, etc.? of a camel of Bani so and so and put it on the back of Muhammad, when he prostrates. The most unfortunate of them got up and brought it. He waited till the Prophet prostrated and then placed it on his back between his shoulders. I was watching but could not do anything. I wish I had some people with me to hold out against them. They started laughing and falling on one another. Allah's Apostle was in prostration and he did not lift his head up till Fatima Prophet's daughter came and threw that camel's abdominal contents away from his back. He raised his head and said thrice, O oh Allah! Punish Quraysh! So it was hard for Abu Jahal and his companions when the Prophet invoked Allah against them as they had a conviction that the prayers and invocations were accepted in the city Mecca, the Prophet said, O oh Allah! Punish Abu Jahal! Utbra bin Rabia, Shaiba bin Rabia, Awali bin Utba, Amaya bin Caliph, and Uqba bin Al-Mut and he mentioned the seventh whose name I cannot recall, 
by Allah in whose hands my life is, I saw the dead bodies of those persons who were counted by Allah's apostle in the Kalib, one of the wells of Badr. Number 243. Narrated Aisha. The Prophet said, All drinks that produce intoxication are haram, forbidden to drink. Number 244. Narrated Abu Hazim. Sahab bin Saadis Saidi was asked by the people, with what was the wound of the Prophet treated? Sahal replied, None remains among the people living who knows that better than I. I used to bring water in a shield and Fathima used to wash the blood off his face. Then straw mat was burnt and the wound was filled with it. Number 245 Narrated Abu Burdim my father said, I came to the Prophet and saw him carrying a sea whack in his hand and cleansing his teeth, saying, Uyu, as if he was retching while the sea whack was in his mouth. Number 246 Narrated Hudayfa, whenever the Prophet got up at night, he used to clean his mouth with sea whack. Number 247 Narrated Al-Bara bin Azib, the Prophet said to me, Whenever you go to bed perform ablution like that for the prayer, lie on your right side and say, O oh Allah, I surrender to you and entrust all my affairs to you and depend upon you for your blessings both with hope and fear of you. There is no fleeing from you, and there is no place of protection and safety except with you O oh Allah. I believe in your book the Quran which you have revealed and in your prophet Muhammad whom you have sent, then if you die on that very night, you will die with faith that is or the religion of Islam, let the aforesaid words be your last utterance before sleep. I repeated it before the Prophet and when I reached Allahumma Amati Bikita Bikaladi Anzalta O Allah I believe in your book which you have revealed, I said, Warasalika, and your apostle. The Prophet said, No, but say, Wanabi Bikaladi Arsalta, your Prophet whom you have sent, instead, 